All right, guys, here it is, the weirdest house on the block. This is day one of my garage ADU conversion in California. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say day one. I've been working on plans for about four months and uh, I originally tried to get this converted in 2018 and the city just jammed me up, jammed me up, jammed me up. And then finally I went to them one day and I was like, hey guys, I have a one bedroom house with this humongous garage. Like I want to have a kid someday. My partner and I like want to enjoy the things that all of our neighbors have. You know, this neighborhood is all three, four, five bedroom homes. And I've got this one bedroom house on top of this big garage. So why is this house so weird? You might ask. This was the first house that was put in this area. I bought it from an old man that built the house. It was super cool. It was a handshake deal. We went down to escrow, no real estate agents involved. Really awesome um, experience. And what was also really cool about it is I bought it from the owner. There wasn't a person in between me and the owner trying to tell me things that the owner was saying. You know, it's like that uh, little game you play, like grapevine or whatever in middle school where you say a word and then it goes around. And by the time it goes around 10 kids, it's a completely different word. Well, it wasn't like that. I got the whole story from this guy. So I'm a big fan of, you know, if you can sell your home, uh, to a person directly, go for it. <laughs> There's no rule that says you can't do that. A lot of people don't know that. So um, anyways, bought it from this old man. It was a really great experience. He didn't want to use real estate agents. This was the first house in this division after the rancher basically uh, subdivided his, his land and sold it off. He built this in 1979. Um, and it was dirt roads and there was no other houses. And so the, who is now an old man and his wife, they didn't have any kids and he liked to work on boats. So he made this one bedroom, 1000 square foot house above a 1000 square foot garage. And that's why it's like this. Um, so Anyways, I tried to get the city to let me do it. Um, I tried for years and then finally the, uh, the laws changed in 2019 and I was able to build a standalone ADU, which it used to be cost prohibitive. The city would basically, you had to be rich and have, um, you know, just want to have like a guest house for your, you know, vacation or visitors. Um, but then it changed so I could do that. And so I built the place in the back. There it is. And then, um, so now, now I'm doing the one in the front. Um, it's been a long journey, uh, but this part of the process has been about four months. We just cleaned out the garage. We got, oh, Pete just showed up. What's up, Pete? Um, Pete's gonna be building this thing with me. So yeah, so here today's day one of demo. We got Cowboy Dave's just gigantic dump trailer. I'm really excited about. And um, we're gonna try to keep all the drywall separate. I talked to the dump and they said that they won't charge me the $100 sorting fee for the dump trailer um, if we keep the drywall separate. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I had to do a lot of uh, uh, electrical stuff on when I did the ADU in the back. Um, so this is all kind of like new stuff, but um, I'm, we're gonna have to relocate a lot of that stuff. I have a, a two gang meter stack on the back side.
of the house and that's gonna have to get replaced by this so this thing's huge so we'll go through we'll go through all that it's kind of a disaster out here because we just finished cleaning up the garage but we'll get the uh with a gopro set up with like a um, uh, whatchamacallit time lapse yeah my brain's I, my brain's not working and get some cool shots so yeah see how we do today So we pretty much just picked an arbitrary spot in the wall and started going to town. Grabbed a couple of respirators, of course, after we started. And you can see the inside of the wall. You see those cross braces. Those are because back in 1979, they just put tar paper and then the stucco mesh right over that and did their stucco. Um, really not many leaks or anything at all so a really robust system for even for how simple it is a lot of over-engineered stuff we're loading all the uh drywall into a dump trailer borrowed from dave thanks dave and before i started this project i wanted to make sure that i could get rid of all the stuff with the trailer so i did a little calculation and i came out to seven thousand pounds of drywall well the actual weight was 3380 but i was conservative i accounted for five eighths double five eighths drywall on the ceiling and five eighths all over the walls and turned out it was just a single layer of half inch everywhere so the uh, dump trailer was more than accommodating to that another sneaky little tool that i got is this uh yellow rolling scaffold and this thing was uh, the star of the show on demo day it allowed us to easily roll around and just have like a short step to get up to the ceiling. Uh, Pete was on that thing most of the day. And then I did some stuff with the ladder, but the long crowbar was easy to reach the, the ceiling stuff uh, without getting onto the ladder for the most part. And there I am taking nails off of the bottom plate. We didn't take any nails off really anywhere else, but stripping them off the bottom plate allows us to sweep up really nicely. So I wanted to make sure those were all cleaned off so we could make the place look nice for the next day to kind of start fresh with a fresh mindset in the morning. So all in all, the demo day went really good. Uh, got it done a little quicker than I thought and uh, really no major water damage or termite damage. There was a couple little spots where there's some dust that came out from termites but it looked like it was old and not active. So I'll be looking into that a little bit more, but that's the demo. Okay, beautiful morning here. Got a lot of stuff done yesterday. Pretty happy with the day one demo progress. The only drywall we didn't get off was these columns. I figured it wasn't a lot of material and that could just be something to keep Pete busy if I'm, if I gotta go. Uh, and then in the, I guess that's the southwest corner, the water heater is still hooked up for the upstairs. Um, we were able to pull the washer dryer out and get a bunch of drywall behind that. Um, so that was pretty cool, but yeah, I mean, uh, oh, there is a little bit of drywall on the headers above the garage doors, but that'll have to come off probably when we take the garage doors off. I'm going to leave them as long as I can, cause it's really nice just for bringing material in and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it's it's going in here. These these concrete floors, I would love to polish them. But I mean, you just don't you don't get concrete like this anymore. I had a uh, in the backyard ADU, ADU, I had the floors polished. And the guy 
I had do it, uh, have a ton of experience. And he came in and checked this concrete out. He said, he was like, oh man, this is, yeah, this is really good concrete. But it's just so hard. It's like you can't even scratch it if you tried. Um, a lot of these scratches are probably from uh, the demo, but it's just like you mop it and it'll probably go away because it's just like uh, very visible right now with the drywall dust. I think he said that they they didn't add fly ash to this stuff back in the day and it was just super hard. But it's, it's beautiful, I would love to polish it. Um, we'll see what happens though. It is sloped and so I've got this curb that comes up uh, basically from the footing. So this is about two inches here at the front of the garage and then at the back it, it becomes uh, flush. See like behind the dryer. It's almost nothing, and then at the back, <clears throat> there's nothing. So, but yeah, next up, I gotta I gotta plan out the the hot water heater. So, because this house is now two units, and upstairs is one bedroom, it's always been one bedroom. This is gonna be two bedroom. Um, I think the thing that makes the most sense is to split it into two tankless water heaters so we can have the uh, energy bills and whatnot separated. But also just a, this big water heater is a lot of real estate here on this property. It's gonna be three units now, so it's gotta go. It's pretty new. Maybe I can get rid of it on Marketplace. Um, <clears throat> The tub and shower above here. Um, overall, I was pretty happy with like any water damage or anything. There was, there's a little bit of, yeah, you can see some leaking from there. I can go over more of that later. I didn't really take too close of a look. All of the copper fittings, or a lot of them, had this just like slow seepage. But what was interesting is there wasn't any water damage on the drywall. So it's just like, I think the solder kind of reacting over time, um, but not actually leaking. So I didn't, you know, it may be like a very, very, very slow leak, um, but yeah. Now that I'm saying that, I'm like, what the heck is that? Well, I'll find out. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, real plywood. I did some work upstairs a number of years ago and uh, saw that and it is glued. There is some sort of adhesive. Um, so, you know, maybe 1979 was uh, the sweet spot where <laughs> The house was old enough to where it wasn't a, uh, well, I guess weird enough in this case, it wasn't a super desirable house, but I knew it had strong bones, you know? I saw the foundation, I went around and checked it out. It looked solid and, you know, the old man explained everything. He even gave me the original plans. It was like two sheets. My house in the backyard is like 20 sheets or something. <laughs> So it just goes to show you how much uh, sludge there is nowadays with trying to get houses built. And we wonder why there's a housing problem. Um, I, I get it, it's a lot more complicated than that, but um, there is a lot of sludge in building and it contributes to our housing problem here. So that's my opinion. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited to get going on this. Um, this is my full focus now. I don't have a, a full-time W-2 9-to-5 job. I, I do have some work that I'm doing um, here and there, but uh, this, is, this is gonna be my main focus. So I'm hoping, I have an arbitrary 
target of four months to finish this. <clears throat> we'll see, you know. Uh, I went through, I made budgets and spreadsheets and all that. Didn't really do a, a timeline, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm hoping I can do it in four months. I think that's reasonable, especially with help. This is all new. I did all this when I did the ADU. Um, I basically just kind of copied the circuits that they had, which was weird to say the least. <laughs> <clears throat> but I have this 200 amp surface mount panel and because the uh, meters are on the outside I had to get a little bit creative and I put this thing in which is called a gutter box and it allowed me to pull the wires from where the panel was originally and then take it to a new location of where I wanted my panel um, and the reason I did that was because I didn't want to have my panel uh, over here. Um, and the wires would only reach so far. So uh, there were some wires going here and some wires going here and I pulled them all over to here. And I was able to get a, um, you can just use wire nuts. This is, a, this is code legal. Um, to ha as long as it's in a box, you can't you can have wire nuts in there. So, I I did wire nuts and electrical tape, made it all nice, and it looks good. So, and then this goes directly to my uh, 200 amp dual meter stack. So it's rated for two 125 amp main breakers and so this even though this is a 200 amp panel this is a um, really a 125 because I have 125 amp breakers servicing it so this is considered a sub panel but anyways I don't know why I'm going on about that I'm excited to get this thing going and uh, yeah this is after day one of demo looking pretty good in here Thank you so much for watching guys. If you're into building, design, or just curious about ADUs, I hope you found something useful in this video. I've been working in construction since I was 16, and I genuinely love building and creating things, from brainstorming ideas to pounding nails. My goal with this channel is to share what I've learned, what I'm still learning, and hopefully make it easier for others who want to take on their own ADU or home projects. If that sounds like your kind of thing, I'd love for you to subscribe, follow along, and leave a comment if you have any questions or just want to say hey. Oh, and one last thing. If you're worried about me overloading the trailer, after I tarped it, I did slap it a couple times and say, that sucker ain't going nowhere. See you guys in the next one.